Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Channel Zero, Candle Cove, Episode 2. This is called I'll Hold Your Hand, full spoilers for the episode, uh, as always. So, we really liked the first one of this, and I think this did a great job of keeping my interest. Yeah, I'm I'm in for all six episodes at this point. I mean, you'd have to really dive off a cliff for me to th- think, nah, I'm not going to bother with the rest. It gave us a lot more to think about. A lot more parts of the puzzle have been brought in, and the first, obviously, the main big one is that Mike killed his brother. Also, on top of bringing this in, it managed to continue being creepy as hell. Yeah, it did. It really did. Um, I I think there was a lot of moments where even even when Mike and his mum uh, Marla were just driving to the uh, the old cement factory or whatever it was they said mm. it was, and you just hear them talking. You hear it, you see them get in the car and drive, but you hear the dialogue of a conversation they're presumably having in the car, or whatever, mm. as they're going. And the music's playing, and they're talking about this other boy might have been, you know, a figment of uh, Katie's imagination. It might not have been because, of course, the episode starts with Katie, the uh, sheriff's daughter, um, stabbing her brother with a hook. Mm. It's very visceral, actually. It is very visceral. It's it's it seems especially visceral considering it's kids doing it. It's yeah. something that you could feasibly think of, you know, adults doing on TV. You'd still like question it, like you know, you'd give it a second glance, but something you wouldn't think too hard about in this sort of show. You know, if if this was two adults stabbing someone with a hook, you know, you you were like, oh, okay, but it stands out as kids. Okay, I, th- I think your entire point there was it's a kid, so it's more shocking, right? Okay, yeah. we can move on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you went about that in a really roundabout way, but uh, but no, the so even even them driving there and talking about that had a nice sense of creepiness. And when Mike spoke to Katie and she mentioned another boy, now I immediately assumed it was her brother. I I just immediately assumed it was him. However, I Me wasn't too. I wasn't thinking that he was dead. I was actually thinking, oh, he's not grown up. He's still a kid because of whatever's going on. It's kept him young. Like that's where my mind was going, mm. um, or whatever. But so they go out and they find his body. They find his brother's body. Mike's body. Something not Mike. Mike's brother's body uh, has been there, and it's sort of set up in a sort of religious display almost when they find it. Yeah, it's very ceremonial looking. Yeah, and we see some quick glimpses like of like a hook. Much like what Katie used, uh, in like you know his brother's body, you know when they were young, and you know it was sort of filling it in, and I wasn't sure like, you know like so that this whatever Candle Cove does, it made Katie do this, so it made Mike do something. I I didn't necessarily jump to murder. I may not have been him that murdered them, but now, now I'm thinking, well, did they make all the kids murder each other? Was it just him that murdered them all? Was it, you know, a mixture of, like, he made one kid murder this person and then this kid murdered that one? And I'm more inclined to think that, yeah. personally. I feel like they've gone for they will kill someone that's close to them. Not necessarily, like, a sibling, like, in this case, but, like, a closer friend. But, in, bo- be a sub- but in both cases here, it was uh, a sibling. Yeah. It was in this case, yeah. But, like, you know, like, there was, what, six murders in the 80s? Five? I, I think it's five. It was four found and the fifth one was... Right. So the other four, I'm not necessarily thinking it was siblings, but maybe close friends, something like that. So you think there's like five people who are all at middle age now who have all murdered someone as a kid and maybe they don't remember it because it feels like Mike doesn't... Maybe that's why he had his episode in the first place is he started to remember what he did. Yeah. You know, that that would seem to make sense. And like obviously like finding the body, seeing Katie do what she did, obviously this is all just going to trigger things, things back yeah. yeah and that that's kind of the impression i was getting from it joe you know at moment i really liked it was a really really fantastic bit of film making because i le- i legitimately felt vertigo at one point it's mm. when he's dreaming and he's walking through a field in the dream and he sees his brother like off in the distance and it's just he's walking and the dream ends it's like he falls through the ground we just see him like fall down off camera but then he wakes up I don't know what it was. It's, it's just I think it's just the film making. It just it legitimately made me feel like a little jolt. Like oh shit! Like do you know what I did? It perfectly captured that feeling. You know when you kind of fall in asleep, but you feel like you're going to fall. Feel like you're falling, and, you and then you jolt. Yeah. It's that it was. It captured that feeling on film, which I don't think I've ever seen done before. But it worked. I felt it. Yeah, because you felt that surreal kind of in a trance, and then jolt awake. Like it, you really got that. And of course, he for. I, I, out of guilt, um, out of trying to figure it out, tells 
his mom about it, mm. and she does not react well. <laughs> what to be imagine. fair, if your kid goes, "Sorry, I murdered your other kid," <laughs> probably not going to take it so well, are you? Especially since I didn't really feel like they had that great a relationship in the first place. No, they clearly don't, because he says he he brings up that she kind of kicked him out almost at like mm. when he was like twelve and. You know, they they clearly have this very fresh... It feels like they haven't seen each other in years. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm really thinking that by the time we get to the end of this season, we will have, like, five of these people who have all who all now remember killing someone. And it's yeah. this show that made them do it. And, you know, and obviously it ends... Well, not the final moment. We'll get to the final moment. But, you know, in terms of Mike's story, it ends with the sheriff comes to pick him up, Gary, but... He doesn't take him to the station. He's taking him to somewhere else, and we don't know. And I think my... I mean, he could be going anywhere, really. I think my incline is to think that he's maybe going back to the cement place, because that's the cave, as it were, that keeps getting mentioned on the show. And and, and the cut into the final scene is the cave from the drawing, yeah. kind of taking over the screen. It implies they're going there. Yeah. Um, and this idea that the... Because, again, at one point he wakes up in like the the pirate puppet like life size is like next to his bed. That thing is terrifying. It's not just me, right? Like those things are genuinely like I don't like these. It's no teeth monster, but it's it's, it's pretty not. Creepy. But they're almost more unsettling because they feel like they could that could be real. <laughs> Do you know what I mean it's like you know how some people are afraid of clowns, mm. and it's like it's not a fear because of how they're inherently scary looking compared to other things. It's because they're real. They're there. These kind of these puppet things feel the same sort of way as that for me. Sure, I can see it. I can see it. Um, of course, other stuff in this episode. Uh, Marla on her own trying to do some research because she does this. At, at first, she wants to help, like try and find out what's going on, and she goes to. It doesn't make it clear who it is exactly. So someone who works at a TV station or the local sort of transmission place. Some or, sort of broadcaster, yeah. yeah. And she starts asking about Candle Cove and about it. And this guy's also seen it. This guy has adamantly seen it to the point where he looks like he's orgasming when he's talking about it. He's clearly in the right age range. Yeah, and he clearly is excited about it. And he's shown her footage, but it turns out it's just like fan fiction that he did to recreate it. And she's like, "Well, do you not have the real thing?" He's like, "No one does. It was unrecordable." You know. I love the idea where he says, uh, "It was always on different channels, the dead channels at the end." And it was, uh, and they hacked into it. It was a pirate show, like pirating the the channels for the pirate show. Do you know what's funny? Actually, I wonder if there's like people who are a bit younger than us who didn't understand a lot of that conversation. Because to think mm. about it, I mean, we weren't that old when everything went digital, and this whole idea of like, all, like you know, because I remember when we were kids, there'd be ninety nine channels on the TV. No, there wouldn't yeah. actually be net any things being broadcast. We'd have, you know, you'd have your basic four or five channels. And then if you had Sky or Cable, sure, you'd get more. But, like... Even after that, there was, like, a few that were always just stack. Yeah. But look, that's that's kind of an old thing now. You don't get that now. No, it's that's a good point. Because I'm a bit long, younger than you, obviously, but yeah. I'm old enough to remember, you know, those. Yeah, but when I don't know I don't imagine you have to be much younger than you, though, to be in the category of not prob- knowing this at all. Probably not. Because, like I say, I was pretty young at that age, like when when that was happening. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it's just, it's just interesting. It's like, it's like I I love the idea of, like, I feel like technology from like the eighties and nineties, like before we went digital when stuff was analog and there was hiss and there was static and there was radio waves and there's still radio waves, but just all that kind of stuff. It it's just it's more it's more suitable. For creating horror out of and mystery, I feel like with the technology we have today, there's like no like mystery. There's no. It's it's almost that digital versus analog argument where digital is it's on or it's off. There is no yeah. signal degradation. It's there or it isn't. Whereas right. analog is you have this spectrum. Yeah, and as much as you can hide things in digital, anything with coding that like you could say, oh, the coding of this website has a hidden message in it, it's nowhere near as interesting as hearing like a voice just come through the static, you know, just a little bit. It's you know, just not, is it? Yeah, it's just right. not the same, you know, so... It's, it's just, a shame, because, really you know, give it like 10 years and they're setting these characters in the same sub range range that we're seeing them now. They're going to be almost too young. Uh, they get, they're going to be getting to the point where they're going, eh. Are we are we aiming too young for the audience? Mm. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's one of those things that'll be a thing. Like, you know, imagine, you know, they'll probably legitimately be young people today who watch a movie and, like, a pager. What? Or... Even cassette tapes. Yeah. Which, you know, were very common. I have legitimately heard a person, a teenager, say that they didn't know how to open a CD case because they never, like, held you one before. You have not. I've heard that. A CD case? Yeah, because they've just always had MP3s and, like, digital music. <laughs> I can't. Pro- I'm sorry. I can't process that. <laughs> a teenager, not not like like a six year old. No, a teenager. Yeah. Let's move on before I my okay. brain just destroys itself. Sure. Uh, of course, the other big the big thing at the end, though, of course, that we find out is that uh, the the other mother, the woman who comes to see Marla at one point and gives her a, a pie. <laughs> mm. Because if you find your son's dead body, you're in the mood for pie. She was there a couple of times. So yeah, to... yeah, we seen her a couple of times, like briefly. But this was like the sort of the main scene I remembered her from was this scene earlier on. And then at the end, we find out that she because we get there was one small scene in the middle of the episode where Amy's sister uh, had something stolen from her house, and it turned out that the, one of the one of the items that was in it was her son's baby teeth that had all fallen out. She'd kept them because some parents do this. It's kind of I think it's kind of creepy personally. Yeah, it's the but... same thing as. Yeah, like where they keep the first lock of hair and uh, stuff like that. It's very exactly. sentimental, isn't it? Yeah, teeth creepy though. Just Disgusting. Throw them out. But uh, we see her have these teeth. I mean, we assume it's the same teeth. It'd be really weird if they showed us that scene and then this turned out to be someone else's teeth. But uh, she lures the uh, tooth monster, who I am going to call uh, Cassandra, because that's the actress who plays her. Or him, or uh, him, her, I, I don't know. It, yes. Who, who knows what gender the, the things might be. And... But it's a woman named Cassandra who plays it. And it's also, it's credited as the tooth child. It doesn't look very childish. I mean, it did in the first one, you know, where it was smaller. Mm. But here, seeing it like that, it was adult height, wasn't it? Was it even smaller than the last one? I don't remember it being, I remember it crawling, so. Oh, that's probably where I'm getting that from. You know, yeah. it crawled, yeah. Yeah, But, it, I but here, it was, ve- we didn't see the whole thing last time, did yeah. we? We just saw it crawl. But it looks really good in film, though, because what, what they're doing is they're, like, they're suitably like having like really shallow depths of field, and like a lot of it's constantly out of focus. Like you'll see the main bit where it's taking the teeth out of her hand is like in focus, but the shoulder of it's completely out of focus, and it feels very because it is like such a like almost a pattern of teeth. Yeah, kind of. It's when you look at like a spiral. Yeah, yeah. And you look at the center, and the center's in focus, but the edges all kind of blur together. That's what it's doing there with the teeth, and it's very clever. Yeah, that's very good. So, no, I thought it was another good episode. A lot of creepy stuff, a lot of... And I'm curious for them to start discovering more people, or more people discovering that they themselves have killed someone, mm. and we get more of that idea. Like, I wonder if the sheriff or his wife, like, did one of them kill someone? Because they both mm. saw the TV show. We know they I did. I can see it being the sheriff. Yeah. Joe, I, also, I, I want to give it a lot of credit for the, the way it intercuts the flashbacks. They feel very artistic, almost, for, for lack of a better word. Mm. You know, like when he's going through the field with all the crops quite high. Yeah, yeah, it's a strong sense of style. And we said that last week as well. There's a lot of... Yeah. It doesn't just feel like a, a typical TV sort of it's, style. I'd, I'm, I'm going to go and say it's definitely the most stylish show on sci-fi. Yeah, that I've seen, certainly. Mm. Or at least in a in a while. Yeah. Well, I've heard The Expanse is quite stylized, but I've not seen that yet. Mm, okay, that's but, fair enough. But from what I've seen, yeah, it definitely feels like the most stylized from sci-fi. That I've probably ever seen, honestly. It's it's probably one of those shows where I forget this is on sci-fi entirely. Whereas a lot of things I watch from them, I'm kind of always a little bit aware of it. Yeah, you watch one on the air, you watch Van Helsing. This this looks like a sci-fi show. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough of it. They're, they're they're fun shows. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But but you kind of go, okay, yeah, sure, this is sci-fi. This I completely forget what this is. But this is them trying to up their game and feel a bit more prestige even aftermath which was don't get me wrong was terrible for other reasons at least the the filming style of it mm. did feel like they were trying to up their game a little bit yeah but uh no so I, I'll, i'd even suggest that the reason why the sheriff is taking him somewhere else is because he has either remembered or he wants to talk to him about it because he remembers something you know i can see that being what the, the reveal mm. is at the start of the next one <gasps> Yeah, I don't think it's going to be quite as sinister as the filmmaking made it out to be, because that kind of feels too obvious. Oh yeah, it does feel too obvious. 
So anyway, that's uh, Channel Zero, Episode 2. We'll be back next week with Episode 3. Let us know what you thought of this one uh, in the comments. Uh, thoughts and theories. Uh, interested to hear. So thank you very much for watching. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you next time.